so one side of it is the chronicle. The other part, the really hard part, was then trying to figure out what church books survived in what form from the late, you know, during the 11th, 12th, and 13th centuries, basically. And that is extraordinarily complicated. The history of liturgy is like one of the great philological puzzles in all of, um, like, in my opinion, Eurasian history. It's extraordinarily complex. Liturgists will devote their entire life to studying the historical trajectory of a single church book. In other words, so you have this one manuscript over here that has its own extraordinarily complex textual history. But the textual history of the church books is actually far more complex because think about it. This was a a narrative ritual story world that was performed 365 days a year all day long. So if you stack up all the church books that are required to do those performances, they can fill up half of a room. So it was a real challenge um, and a, a remarkable opportunity to learn a lot of stuff I didn't know to try to put together the story um, based on the, the research of a lot of fantastic liturgists who with, without whose work I could never have even begun to come close to writing this, to this study. And so what I eventually ended up doing was just showing how the sacred mythology contained in these church books, which was performed by the clerics who were the men writing history in early Rus, how that totally shaped their entire conception of what history was. Because the ultimate argument I make in the book is that liturgy wasn't ultimately just influencing how history was written down in books. Really, it's what I call the liturgical past, which was performed at the divine services. Uh, that was the experience of history in the early Middle Ages. Um, it was the experience of history itself. Okay, so we have this very modern and in my view, perhaps an anachronistic idea of what history meant in the 11th to 12th centuries. And we picture this chronicler sitting at his desk in the scriptorium, let's say, uh, surrounded by earlier Byzantine chronicles and other tales, and he's busily redactingly, redacting and compiling the first written history of, of the Rus. I'm not suggesting in my book that that's necessarily inaccurate, but what I am suggesting is that it is perhaps incomplete because the clerical chroniclers of Rus were, were liturgical celebrants first and they were history writers second. Okay, so I think that we, we, we have to take into account not only the historiographical past, which was contained in books, we, we have to determine to what extent their conception of history was determined by the liturgical past that they celebrated uh, each and every day during the divine services. This was the past of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of Mary and Jesus Christ and the apostles, of Byzantine emperors, ascetics, and church fathers. So my hypothesis in, in the work is that basically historiography first arose in Kiev as an attempt to make the native past conform to this liturgical past, this Byzantine liturgical past, and my evidence for this is the myth of Christian origins preserved in the Rus primary chronicle.